Welcome back guys. Yesterday we left off with just putting the two end pieces on the back of the chair and from there I just went ahead and finished the back. So after you get those two end pieces on, your next piece to put on would be the middle. And it's pretty simple for you to just measure from the edge here to the edge of the middle one and on the same thing on the other side and that way you'll pretty much get it right in the middle of the, uh, of the chair back itself. Then after that, you just lay your two pieces in between on the sides and just, you can pretty much eyeball where they go and leave yourself about the same amount of spacing. On this one, it just pretty much worked out to where I had a three quarter inch gap at the tops to, to line up. So they all ended up with that three quarter inch spacing. Now, since I made this chair uh, about an inch and a quarter wider than I made our original sample chair right here, it gave me more space in terms of the overall back. And you can notice here on this one that we only ended up with five pieces for the, uh, for the chair back. Well, on the new one, since it was wider, I was able to accommodate seven pieces, which it's, it's up to you. It's not that much more of a space between the five if you use five pieces. I just thought I'd try seven and see what it looked like. Uh, it's not bad, it's you know slightly different. I think the overall feel of the seven pieces is more bench-like or straighter on your back when you're sitting in it than with the five. I think the five gives you more of a feeling of that radius across the back of the chair. Okay, so we've got our back pieces on. And then while I was at it, I went ahead and put a small brace here on the bottom just to give the end of the chair on each side here a little more support so it can't warp in or anything like that and keeps everything flush and straight. Now the one thing you have to watch on this is the length of the piece has to be, Mr. Cameraman, if you come over here, the same length as what you have from inside the stringer to inside the stringer. Because sometimes when you put it together, you might end up with a smaller or larger size at the end. You haven't done anything wrong if you've made all the pieces the correct size. It just sometimes, you know, the wood can be slightly askew and, and it's just simple if you make this measurement from here to here. I think it ended up being about 20 and a quarter inches. So I cut a piece that length and then I went ahead and used that piece at that length in the back. That way I, I know that my, my stringers and everything are parallel with each other and nothing's, nothing's out of place. And it gives me a lot more support on the, on the back of the chair, okay? From there, I made my braces. If you notice, it's kind of a corbel look here on the front with this brace. This is what the brace actually looks like. And then on the back, I made a brace like this, and I went ahead and cut the bottom at 20 degrees, just kind of lining up with the rest of the chair. I did the same thing under here, cut it back at 20 degrees. Just, it just kind of follows the lines in the chair, follows the angles. So instead of just having a block piece underneath it, it's a little more aesthetically pleasing. Just kind of looks better. That's basically it. Now these pieces that, uh, that I made, these supports, I made them out of a piece of one by four like this. So all I had to do was cut eight pieces, uh, three and a half, which is the nominal width of a, one, of a one by four, and I cut them six inches long. I cut eight pieces like that. And after I got my pieces, all I did was glue them together in pairs, okay? So you got two pieces glued together just like that, and that gave me that uh, thickness that I was trying to achieve, which is one and a half inches. 
So I glued those together, I let them dry, and then after that I went ahead and made my cuts. Now, my chair arm was pretty simple also. I took, and you can use anything you've got laying around that's got a radius on it, anything round, the bottle, the bottom of the glue, a cup, or anything like that, place it on the corners of your, of your uh, chair arm, just trace around it. And then I put it on the saw, cut them back at 45 degrees of an angle right next to where I traced, and then just sanded that radius onto it. So I ended up with just a nice edge like that instead of just a, a square edge, okay? On the back, a little bit different. I measured over from my straight side, two and three quarters of an inch, made a little mark, and then I measured down, or actually I measured up 12 inches, like that, made a little mark, and then I just connected those two lines. I connected the, the mark at 12 inches with the mark at two and three quarters, and that gave me that slight angle like that, just so it kind of tapers back when you look at the front of the chair, okay? Now, I'll show you how I installed those. All you have to do is set your arm in place where it goes flat on the top of the front leg, line it up with your brace on the back, and just hold it there in place. Okay, as long as it's, and if you can get right here, Mr. Cameraman, underneath my hand, you can see how this area right here is fitting flat with the top of the leg. It is, isn't it? Okay. Then if you have that flat, all you've got to do is mark the bottom of where the brace went. And that tells you where to go ahead and put this piece on. I'm going to uh, clamp that on just to satisfy my curiosity. That looks pretty good. Make my line a little darker. That, this one I'm not real worried about. The, uh, the line itself, whether it's dark or light, because it's going to be covered up. It's not going to show. So from there, I'll take my glue and I'll apply it Remember in that kind of serpentine pattern on the bottom of it, making sure I put the glue on the right side. Just going around like a snake, not too close to the edge, not too much to where it squeezes out all over everywhere. I'll go ahead and put it in place and It's looking pretty good right there. I only need a couple of nails in it to hold it while it's in place. And that should be pretty good as far as the as far as the arm goes. Yeah, it's fitting fitting flat here on the top of our leg. It's resting flat on the brace on the back. So, not bad. Not bad at all. Now, the arm itself is going to overhang the leg on the inside 
three quarters of an inch, which just so happens to be the same thickness as the wood that we're using, so we can cut a piece of wood and check that and use it as the spacer so that we keep that that reveal or that overlap of, of three quarters of an inch on the top. Now. What's up guys? I'm gonna take my neighbor's um, my glue, apply a little bit to the top of my arm, and then swirl some in that snake pattern on the back. Taking my arm. I'll apply it on the back and then just kind of come down. Keeping this in place so that I end up with that reveal I told you about, which was three quarters of an inch. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna to pop a couple of nails in the back. I check my front again just to make sure that I've got my reveal. That looks pretty good, three quarters of an inch. Now I'm gonna look down my side line for my leg just so that when I put a couple of nails in. go into the center of that, of that leg. Now, this piece is going to sit right there and I can move it slightly to make it rest flush on the bottom of my arm and then I want it to be in the center of my legs. And I've got it pretty much in the center of there. I'll make a couple of little marks so that I know where to set it back in between my two lines. Get my glue again. Making sure I'm putting the glue on the right side. A little bit of a swirl pattern. Same thing here. this at a little bit of an angle so I don't make a mess with my glue. Put my glue in right there. Lock my nail gun up a little bit. Just a quick nail on the bottom of there, it doesn't show. I can make sure I'm in between my lines and I can push these pieces to where they fit. Got a small drip of glue right there. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off. Looks like everything's pretty much skinny right where I want it to. So I'll make a couple of shots in here to hold it from the inside. And I've got a slight gap or crack right there, so all I have to do is squeeze that together, put my nail in, a little bit of an angle to hold it and 
And what I'll try to do, let me grab my speed score. I want to keep my holes that I'm going to drill for the screws on the top lined up with the ones on the other side. And that essentially, if you can come around here, Mr. Cameraman, 